Welcome, welcome to the Talent Empowerment Podcast, where we share the stories of great humans. So you can lift up your organizations, your teams, and your community. I am your host, Tom Finn. On the show today, we have a Los Angeles native talking all things HR, community health. Uh, she's a wonderful HR leader. Her name is Evelyn Abrego. Evelyn, welcome to the show. Thank you, Tom. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored. Well, we are excited to have you on the show, and we typically share stories of exceptional leadership, but we also find that it's important to share the stories of the next generation of incredible HR leaders. And I want to introduce you all to Evelyn. She is an HR generalist at Saban Community Clinic, which oversees uh, employee relations, benefits, and leave of absence in her organization. She's had 12 years of HR experience. And if you're not familiar with the clinic, they focus on whole person care through five community locations in Los Angeles, providing all of the services people need to be healthy all in one place. Now, Evelyn has a bachelor's in psychology from the great Cal State Long Beach. Uh, so LA through and through has her professional certification in HR and strategic workforce planning, born and raised in the city of angels and a working mommy of three beautiful babies. Uh, before we get into all of that, what empowers you on a day-to-day -day basis, Evelyn? Honestly, my kids. Uh, definitely, <clears throat> excuse me, a huge motivator for me getting out of bed in the morning is seeing their faces and coming home to them, obviously. But separately from that, I really enjoy the work that I do at Saban Community Clinic working alongside of such great professionals who are so dedicated to delivering quality health care to vulnerable populations in Los Angeles is just icing on the cake for me. Well, I love that. As a, as a family man myself uh, with three kids similar to you, uh, it's a very important part of my day uh, as well. And, and uh, appreciate all of the work you do balancing uh, being a mom and being a leader in the community and being in, in human resources. So thank you for the great work uh, that you do every day. So let's jump into this uh, community clinic. So Saban Community Clinic, four locations in LA. What do you all do? Five locations, actually. Five locations, perfect. Five locations. We have four physical offices that are Saban Community Clinic located throughout Los Angeles from West Hollywood all the way to kind of Koreatown. Um, and in addition, we have a small satellite clinic inside of a, um, a homeless shelter uh, where we provide care directly to patients experiencing homelessness um, and you, um, currently living in the shelter location. Uh, we do provide medical, dental, vision, behavioral health, showers for, again, our patients uh, experiencing homelessness. We also have one of our favorite, I wouldn't say benefits that Saban offers, is um, we have a dedicated team of eligibility specialists and they are, their entire purpose within the organization is to connect all of our patients to healthcare, whether that's through Covered California, Medi-Cal, Medicare, um, they are trained and, and specifically to help all of our patients find coverage or set up some sort of um, payment plan if you do not qualify for health care coverage elsewhere. Yeah, that's fantastic. And we all know that health care is so important in the United States and, and it can be pretty costly. And there are underserved communities all over the United States and quite frankly, all over the world. Uh, for those of you listening uh, in the, the 14 countries that we, we are in currently as the Talent Empowerment Podcast. But locally here in Southern California, it's so important to do that work in the community. And Saban does that great work uh, to support uh, those below the poverty line uh, is what I'm hearing. Yes. Uh, and, and be a real impactful member uh, in, in the community. So as you think about the work you do in human resources, help help us understand your purview and what are the things that, that you're doing in work every day to, uh, to help achieve the goals of the organization? I take my role in human resources very seriously and from the perspective of really empowering our employees, first of all, making the right decisions, employees 
that have the same vision, mission, values that the organization has in catering to these vulnerable populations. It's not easy work. Um, a lot of our patients have a multitude of experiences that we we sometimes don't see at the surface level, right? People experiencing poverty, people experiencing um, substance abuse issues. Um, and it, it takes, um, it takes a lot um, to, to come in every day and service our, our patients. And really make things a little bit better for everybody out there, right? I mean, really what you're doing in the clinic is taking folks that are vulnerable and really providing them the care they need to be the healthiest version of themselves that they can be, uh, which is a real uh, bonus in the community and, and the support and love that you all are putting out there is, is really um, terrific. So, so tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, your, your specific job in empowering people. You're, you're doing a couple of things within your role, employee relations and benefits. Um, is there something that jumps off the page to you that, that really sticks out as a benefit that you offer um, that makes you feel good when you're talking to those fellow employees? That makes me feel good, really all of it. Um, from the benefits perspective, is helping employees navigate um, health care coverage in the United States. So, um, I mean, you and I know that there's a little bit of some bureaucracy going on with our health care and just helping employees make informed decisions, how to um, select a primary care provider, for example. Or, I've been assigned to this provider. I don't like them. How do I change? Like things as simple as that, I'm finding that some employees just don't know how to navigate it and really approaching um, simple conversations like that from a place of empathy, like, sure, let's let's help you out. I, I know exactly how to uh, change, help you change your primary care provider or navigate a referral that some, maybe the insurance is kicking it back and saying um, this doesn't fit for whatever reason or this is denied for whatever reason. Well, <clears throat> really helping them navigate those issues. and. Honestly, I, I talk a lot about our a lot about our patients, but the reality is is that our employees are also facing the same types of challenges that everyone else has been facing. Coming out of the pandemic, um, we've experienced loss. We've experienced kind of a, a disconnect in family, just being apart for so many years, and and reconnecting to that, reconnecting uh, with your families, addressing. Things as simple as I've, I've put off a, a health care procedure that I needed to do two years ago simply because I was too afraid to go into to um, have a surgery or something like that and be alone because um, the hospitals weren't allowing visitors and things like that. I myself had a baby in the pandemic. So um, feeling alone in, in a delivery room until my husband was able to be let in because he couldn't pass, you know, the COVID test or the COVID protocol. So all of these issues, it, there our patients are affected, of course, and our employees. And I really get joy out of helping our employees, A, navigate those benefits issues, um, and B, helping them take the time off that they need to address those healthcare needs that they have themselves have put off just because of everything going on in the world. Yeah, it sounds like you love educating people on how to navigate the healthcare system, whether that's employees, patients. And what I love that you're saying is that you've got to take care of your people first uh, so that they do a great job taking care of your customers. And in this particular case, uh, your customers um, are a very important population in the local community to support. And and so what I think I'm hearing is start with your people uh, and really focus on them first, right? And then they'll do a great job for the business uh, if they feel well well taken care of. 100%. And, and I feel very blessed to work for an organization that sees that in their patients and also embodies that for the employees. Yeah, I, th I think it's really important that we uh, take a moment to to take time as as leaders in human resources or as business leaders in general, and just make sure that we're focused on others. 
Um, so we tend to get very focused on ourselves in, in a global market in today's day and age. And how important is it just to focus on others, be others first? Uh, it just makes the whole difference in culture in an organization. And quite frankly, it makes you feel a little bit better uh, if yeah. you're thinking about other people, right? Yeah. There's, there's many things to do in life, right? Many jobs and things and uh, careers, but I feel very blessed to be in the position. To, um, to serve first so that our employees can serve our patients. Yeah, I absolutely agree. So, so let me ask you this as a, as a mom with three kids who's working in today's modern age, how do you balance um, all of those competing priorities and, and still feel like yourself? I, <clears throat> I'm very blessed to um, have a spouse that is very supportive. I have to have to, I can't, I couldn't be a working mom without my, my husband, Hyrule. Shout out to him. Um, he is actually a stay-at-home dad. So while I'm running around meeting the needs of the clinic, he is holding down the fort at home, and uh, which is a unique kind of family dynamic um, because he, he – He's the dad at the park with the kids um, when they're on vacation and he's making the meals and, and things like that. And, and unique also to, to our culture as well. I'm Latina. And so it's not something that we see commonly, uh, but he, he's, he's a rock star. He's everything. Yeah, that, that's amazing. And you know what it, um, it shows us that we're in this modern world and we can make it work however we want to make it work based on our family and shout out to the Abrego family uh, mm -hmm. for getting it done. Uh, and, and, and look, this is, this is the way the world should be right. Um, no matter what our background is, where we're from, what our gender is, uh, what, what our ethnicity is, what the color of our skin is live the life that you want to live, uh, be inclusive of other people um, and make it work for you. Uh, that's, that's exactly what, what you all are doing. I love it. Um, and uh, and support it uh, as well. So so well done. So we've got balance in the home. We've got um, a great a great career that you love. Where do you see your career going? Where do you want to take this um, over the next sort of five or ten years? Honestly, I'm pretty content with the work that I'm doing at Saban, the people that I work with, um, my team. My immediate boss, um, our CHRO, uh, we have such a great team that, you know, everyone's willing to, to pitch in and help out whenever, whenever you need it. Is one person struggling? All hands on deck. What do we need to do? What can I take off your plate so that you can get X, Y, Z done? And vice versa. They do the same for me. So... In the next five years, I hope to still be dedicating my time to Saban Community Clinic. Um, if I'm not at Saban, I, you know, things change, of course, but um, I really, at this moment in my career, I can't see myself leaving the organization just because of how well our person, my personal uh, values align with this organization. Yeah, so there's a lot of leaders out there, Evelyn, right now trying to figure out how to retain employees. People are moving companies, they're leaving, leaders aren't sure why, what's happening. And here you are saying, I've got a great uh, internal leadership team, I've got a great boss, I've got a great culture, I'm not going anywhere. And, and are those the key things, leadership, boss, Culture, is that what's important to you that makes you want to stay? Definitely, definitely. And I, and we're experiencing the same issues as well, the turnover. Um, and, and everyone's needs are unique, right? Uh, for some people, it may be worth it to make a jump for an additional two, $3,000 a year. Um, that's okay. And I, I respect everyone's decision to... to choose where they want to dedicate their time. Uh, but I find those th those areas is very it's important to me and the money of course is is, is secondary I would say to me in my career right now.
All right. Well, you're going against the grain on this because most people, uh, when they're surveyed, and I'm not sure who the people are that survey, but people get surveyed somehow and they're surveyed and they say, yes, you know, money is critically important uh, and maybe the most important. But I think you're right. Like if we just think about this as general human beings, we want to make a certain living so we can support our family. Right. That's the basics. But then after that, it really comes down to where do I fit? Who do I work with? Do I enjoy the people that I'm working with? Uh, do I enjoy the entirety of my life? And I think sometimes people get impatient and want more and more and more and more. Uh, and then you get there, you might get to more and more and more and more. And then you realized, uh oh, that's not what I wanted. So kudos to you for having a very balanced, thoughtful approach to, to your career. Thank you. And, and I've worked for many organizations at, at this point in my career, from larger HR departments where things were very specialized, every person did a certain role, but I enjoy the generalist capacity and having my hands a little bit of everything. No day is the same. Every day is unique. Um, and that makes it that much more fun for me. Yeah, I, I imagine it does. And some of those um, fundamentals in the role of HR are so critically important to keep the organization running. Um, I, I guess I wonder from from your perspective, do you feel like your identity is tied up in, in your career? Do you feel like it's you're defined by what you do or do you feel a little differently? I feel that my career has definitely impacted the way I work and the way I live and positive ways. Um, in my role, you know, I read contracts, I put together policies or draft policies from, for my leadership. So even tasks, things like buying a house, I'm able to decipher information and read it and, and, um, ask questions. So in that way, yes, I've learned a lot from human resources and I've been able to apply it to my regular life, but also in sort of kind of negative ways like I I know a lot of people that adore the show The Office I can't watch it I cannot take my HR hat off it makes me cringe at all the things that are going on um, so in that way I wish I could take my hat off and just enjoy the show um, but I've heard nothing but positive things nothing against The Office I just can't personally enjoy it in the same way that others can so um funny thing about me, I guess. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's a funny fact. I feel like at, at cocktail parties, you need to be sharing that, uh, you know, whenever, whenever you're out and about, I am not big on the office. There's a lot of fans of the office out there because it is so awkward and uncomfortable, but I could imagine that sitting in an HR seat and watching the horrendous violations of human behavior, uh, within an office setting, uh, would be a little uncomfortable for sure. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, we've used clips from the office to kind of illustrate some issues um, in trainings and things like that, because we do like to make it fun and engaging for our employees. So we've used a clip or two from the office to kind of drive home a point here and there. Yeah, well, it's uh, it's all meant in fun. I think they are professionally paid actors and actresses. Yeah. Um, trying to, uh, trying to create some humor in the world, which is, which is a okay with me as well. Um, uh, so as you think about, um, the holidays and, uh, and sort of that time of year, are there some things that you're doing at the clinic, uh, that are different during the holiday times, maybe, uh, for employees or, or certainly for, um, you know, some of the patients as well? I know that. Yes. Yes. For patients. Uh, we do have um, holiday parties and gifts and things that, that our um, teams put together for our patients, our homeless patients as well. Um, from an HR perspective, I'm on site today and I was delivering cookies to all of our staff with a little sticker and thank you and have a wonderful um, Thanksgiving. So we do try to do these fun things and, and it, it's fun to see how employees kind of receive it. So for example, like I said, today I was handing out cookies to our staff and just hearing them say, Oh, I remember these from last year. Oh, they were so good. I hope we got the same one. Um, and just engaging with employees, employees asking, did you make these cookies? I wish 
I don't have the time to bake 600 cookies. Um, but um, it was fun. It's things like that, fun things that we put together, not just around Christmas time or, or um, around the holidays, but even throughout um, Employee Appreciation Day, Valentine's Day. We love putting together these little just quick thank you treats just to um, let employees know that we're thinking about them and that we're we're just as appreciative of them throughout the year as throughout the holiday time. Oh, I love that. And do, do you have a, a strategic calendar that you keep that kind of tells you, hey, we're doing these employee events at different parts of the year to, to make sure you're staying on track? Yes, we do. Um, and like for Employee Appreciation Day, I, off the top of my head, I think it's around March, but we I start kicking up that conversation in January. Like, what are we doing this year? Because especially this year, because last year we gave away these really cool sweaters with, with our um, uh, logo and everything. And I'm like, how are we going to top ourselves this year? I, I don't know yet. I don't think determined. you're going to give that away on the on the podcast today, are you? No, 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 I can't. We're going to we're going to have to keep that one a secret until <laughs> uh, till the end of the first quarter, uh, and I'm sure the employees will find out first before us. Uh, that's wonderful. I mean, look, the most important thing we can do as an organization is support the employees uh, and deliver for those employees, so they deliver for our customers, um, no matter who our our customers are. Um, now you're you're born and raised in uh, in the city of Angels. For those of you that don't know. Um, that is the hip hop term for Los Angeles, California, um, the great, great area of Los Angeles. And so uh, born and raised, why haven't you left? Personally, I think I'm attached still through the umbilical cord to my parents. <laughs> <laughs> I literally live five minutes away from them and I don't know what I would do without them. Again, that community aspect, right? I've thought about it multiple times. My husband and I have <clears throat> even visited cities that we think, okay, maybe this will be a good transition for us. And we always, we always end up back here because um, with three small kids, like just getting away for a date night, for example, we need to have mom around. Um, so, you know, to have that support or just things happen. Husband has to go to the doctor or I've got an important thing to attend and and we need a, a sitter so i and i just adore my family i don't know what i would do without them honestly yeah it, you it's can, so you nice can tell that community and family is a is a big deal for me yeah we i think we can sense that your um your ability to stay connected to the community and the family is is critically important to your to your energy and the way that you come to work and show up every day uh which which also permeates throughout the organization uh, as well. And so, well, well done, uh, mom and dad, for uh, you know being so supportive that, that you're not leaving. Got a shout yeah. out to them as well, uh, mm -hmm. because that, that family structure is so important um, as we all go through different moments within our life, right? And have that support um, from, from family members and, uh, and in the community as well. So as you, as you think about your boss, uh, is there something that they do that that makes you feel like they're the right person to work with? Overall, definitely. Um, the level of respect that our leader gives each of the members on our team is um, makes it all worth while i mean there's challenges of course people make mistakes um we run into roadblocks or find out too late that some mistake has happened and now how do we fix it and just um the, again the level of respect and level of emotional resiliency that she demonstrates um mm -hmm. fair treatment and just overall effectiveness and um honestly years of knowledge that she can um coach she's been able to coach us on um is is just again another aspect of why i'm still at well, another reason why i'm still at saban yeah well i imagine that that type of leadership style makes you feel pretty good yeah definitely um just 
being able to remain calm in, in, in the face of these issues, like I, like I mentioned, again, people, you know, we make mistakes here and there, uh, but just treating us fairly, acknowledging our contribution, thanking us for a job well done, um, really goes a long way in just demonstrating empathy um, towards towards her staff and um, do you think you'll lead the same way so let's yeah. let's fast forward I'm, I'm gonna promote you right now so we're, we're ten years later you're the CHRO uh, you're right there uh, at Saban and now you're leading a team do you think your leadership style will be the same I hope so I want to be uh, just as um, steadfast as she is, um, again, effective in the sense of having a clear vision and strategic objectives, um, focused, being able to provide focused coaching and real um, development opportunities. I, I hope that I get to be just like her. Well, I, I love the admiration um, for, for great leadership and it's so important uh, and it's a testament to um, the overall organizational culture really is, is bringing in great people. And I tell her all the time. I mean, I thank her obviously. And, and I tell her I'm, I'm not trying to kiss, butt, but I love to give credit when credit is due and, and just, she's an awesome leader. And I, I, I would love to be just like her. Yeah. And, and you know, what's so funny. We can take those, um, those highlights of great people doing great things. And we do actually incorporate them into our work life today. And then when you get there, as your career progresses and the next promotion, the next move, what have you, um, they become much more natural over time. So things start to progress and it becomes part of your personality. So I always, I always say, gosh, seeing great leaders and working with great leaders will impact you maybe 10 years from now differently than the way you feel today. Um, and we can mimic those great behaviors in an organization as we're learning them. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's, let's go to being a mom. Uh, so we've got three kids. Hardest part about working full time and being mom. What's the hardest part? I really worried in the beginning, like I said, uh, dad's a stay at home dad. And I was really worried that me being the working parent that I would lose that connection or that I would not be mom and maybe he would take on that, that role, but pleasantly surprised and uh, that I'm still mom. When I get home, everyone needs to be on my lap or sitting next to me or pulling on my shirt or, and as exhausting as it can be when you've, you've given all you've got mentally um, <clears throat> to get home, seeing those faces and seeing how excited they are to see me and how excited they are to tell me about their day and the best thing that happened to them or the worst thing that happened to them or what their friend said on the playground. Like it's, you just get this second second air of energy um, when you get home yeah. and you see their faces. And I'm, I'm so appreciative of my husband and again, our family dynamic um, because with, without him, I, I don't know that I could do the work that I do in the, in the same capacity, but um, I think I went off on a tangent because I love my kids. Um, <laughs> well, well, you should. Uh, that's, that's good news that you love your kids. Um, mm -hmm. And, and look, you said it beautifully, Evelyn. It's great to come home and see their smiling faces and hear about how their day was. And that even though you're a, you're a working mom, you're a mom first. And, uh, and that title of mom still, still reigns supreme, uh, when you come home, which is so important. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So now that, now that we've gotten to know you a little bit, We've, uh, we've learned about your career and the culture of the organization, where you're going, how you incorporate that with community and family and, and the right type of empathy across, across your organization. Help us, help us understand, is there a code that you live by? Is there something that gets you up in the morning that, that drives you? Um, help us understand something a little under the surface that maybe we wouldn't know if we didn't ask. drives me I don't know well, I mentioned my family and the work that I do that really is a driver for me to get out of bed in the morning but in terms of a code 
a long time ago, I read a book by um, the author is escaping me, but it's called The Four Agreements. And uh, I want to look this up just so I can give you the, the author. But that we'll, we'll put book, it in the show notes. Don't worry. Yes. Really changed my life and really um, is something that I try to focus on, on how I approach um, everything that I do, both professionally and personally. Yeah, I love it. It's the, the Four Agreements, A Practical Guide to Personal Freedom, um, a book of wisdom. And Don Miguel Ruiz uh, is Don the author on, on that book. You can pick it up on Amazon. Uh, not that I am promoting the book, but you can pick it up on Amazon just like everything else. Yes, very impactful for me. Uh... And I think that's, that's important, right? So we're reading, we're being thoughtful about the information that we're taking in. We're in the right culture and in the right setting within your organization, which I think is just absolutely fantastic. So Evelyn, if people wanted to find you, they're interested in learning more about you. They want to follow you. They want to get to know you. Um, how would they go about doing that? I think the best way to find me is through LinkedIn. Evelyn Menhivar Abrego is my name on, on LinkedIn with Savan Community Clinic. Um, LinkedIn.com slash Evelyn Menhivar. And Menhivar is spelled M-E-N-J-I, B like Victor, A-R. Um, that's my maiden name. That's how long I've been on LinkedIn. <laughs> well, well done. And we'll put a link in the show notes. So don't, don't worry if you're driving, we don't want you to try and write that down. Um, Evelyn, I can't thank you enough for being on the show, but I think more importantly than that, thank you for the work that you're doing day in and day out in our local communities uh, to support those um, uh, employees and uh, those members that, that come into your clinics to make Los Angeles a little bit better place. So thank you for all that great work that you do. Thank you for having me, of course, and giving me a little bit of a platform. In a lot of ways, I feel like a normal person just doing um, human resources, um, but it's amazing um, to have people like you that are telling these stories and really um, putting real people to a job. Yeah, real people, real stories uh, at the Talent Empowerment Podcast. You nailed it. Uh, and thank you for joining the Talent Empowerment Podcast. I hope this conversation with Evelyn has lifted you up so that you can lift up your teams, your organizations. Let's get back to people and culture together. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks, everybody.